What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, I've got something fresh and new for you. We're going to be checking out an exclusive demo that was sent over by the developers for a game called Beneath Oresa. Uh, this is a game that's really, really hard to describe. Like, I don't know if it's steampunk or if it's like cyberpunk. It's like somewhere in between those two tangential motifs. And like, honestly, I don't know where to place it. It's a game where you are a medieval knight with a robot arm who has been tasked with slaying demons and monsters and cultists down beneath the surface of a post-apocalyptic world. Uh, it's a roguelike with deck building mechanics inside of it, and honestly, like, that in and of itself is usually enough to make me roll my eyes and be like, oh look, another deck building roguelike. But like, honestly, I found the action in this game to be really satisfying. Like, it's got a really cool presentational quality to it. So we're gonna dive on in today, take a look at the game for about 25 minutes, see if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or otherwise pass on. If after watching this, you wanted to get the game for yourself, I'll have a link for you down below. I don't know when their demo is going to go publicly live, uh, but they are planning on doing a demo so that they can take on feedback and all that kind of stuff. And so the link will be down there for whenever it goes active. On top of that, you can also find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream just in case you wanted to hang out live on any given day of the week. I'm going into this mostly blind. I did one run and there's still some things I haven't quite figured out about the game. But since it's just like a demo, I didn't really want to go too hard on the critique and too hard on like the nitpicking anyways. So we'll just kind of freeball it this time around and we'll just kind of like tackle things as they come. Let's play. Uh, we can choose a plead. Since the gods have abandoned Oresa, House Agika receives pleas from those who need help in the city. Alright, so I guess we'll just be the Vassal's Envoy, since these other two are disabled right here, not available inside the demo. Uh, we get to pick a character, and so we've got this main guy right here, Hectos. Apparently his first attack of the round against a foe gives him three crowns and one retaliation. I'll talk about what that is in just a minute once we actually get into the game, because trying to explain it from here is going to be like difficult. Uh, but anyways, you get to pick a main hero and you get to pick a backup hero. And that's actually one of the mechanics that I haven't quite figured out yet is like how you swap in between your heroes because it seems like it's implied that you should be able to swap. But there's a couple of characters that are available for right now. There are some unlocks and things like I don't know if this guy is locked for the demo or if that means he's unlockable. I'm not sure, but we'll just go with the default guy for right now. And then our companion obviously has to be Naridi. Uh, so I guess we'll take her. She's got all kinds of bonuses and things that she gives you as she levels up. Like your, your sidekick levels up the same way your character levels up. And they give you like bonuses and things that are running down the side right here. And so just things to keep in mind when you're trying to select the perfect partner for your underground gore fest activities. All right, so off we go. We are officially on our underground adventure, but we can still see sunlight. So that means that we're not that deep. Uh, we have a fight and we get to pick a strategy right here. Uh, these are basically going to give us limited bonuses depending on what we choose to do. And so we can coordinate, which means we get 10 free armor on the first round, or we can ambush the enemy and that means we get two cards on the first round. I'm going to go for the free armor. So here's where we fight the enemies, and as you can see, the game's got kind of like a cel-shaded comic book Borderlands thing going on that I actually think is really visually appealing, and in fact, the fights themselves are also really good looking. Now, as with all of the Slay the Spire type games, everybody is implying what they're going to do on their turn. So, like, this guy right here is going to buff himself or his allies. This guy is going to attack us twice from range. This guy is going to run away, and then he's going to shoot twice. This guy is going to hit us for five, and he's going to try to get close and put a debuff on us. All right, fair enough. So, we're going to need a total of 15 armor in order to survive this turn. Uh, everything else works exactly how you'd expect it to in a game like Slay the Spire. You have energy. It's listed over here. Your cards cost energy in order to use. But there is a new mechanic that's been incorporated into this game that is... It hasn't been crazy important except on really extended fights. Uh, but basically, you have a counterattack charge meter. And so, anyways, what happens is... 
you get zeal for playing a lot of your cards. That fills up this meter. When this meter is full of zeal, it means you instantaneously, when an enemy attacks, you cancel their turn and you counterattack them for an amount of damage that is equal to the amount of retribution that you have stacked up as well. And so looking at these cards, for example, this one gives us two retribution. And then this one right here will give us zeal. And like, you see what I mean? Like, you kind of, you got to work around it. And so my initial thought is we do Biting Parade to get the armor that we need. And then I think we attack this guy right here and just kill him on the first turn to eliminate a damage source. So there it is. He's been eliminated. He's all down and taken care of. We've also got a free over attack over here called Zeal. I'm going to put it on this guy. And so I'll gain Smite on the next turn if he's still alive and I don't think six damage is 30 damage so he should still be alive on the next turn and then we'll just bypass the enemy's gonna come on in we're gonna block his bullets with our sword because we're just dope like a Jedi like that uh, we took three damage right there which surprises me because I thought we had 15 armor stacked up interesting uh, let's see here against adversity return an attack from your discard pile if it costs zero gain one smite yeah I'll do that because we did use a zero yeah we used that one right there and so there we go we'll throw that one back on in and that's given us two free attacks I think so we can do 12 damage right there 21 26 we just don't quite have enough to take him down so instead I'm gonna go after this guy all right and so with the energy we have left we'll finish him off we're gonna go biting parade for two blocks and unfortunately I've got spreading infection that's gonna be a card from this guy's poisoned blade because I didn't discard it using some of my energy what's gonna end up happening here is it's gonna make a copy of itself and go into the discard pile so we actually have two of those now which increases our chances of having like a crappy turn Oh, he missed. Nice, dude. So apparently proximity does, in fact, play a big part in, like, positioning in this game because he threw that attack at his feet. And so we successfully avoided it and didn't actually need that block at all. All right, cool, man. So, like, what's he going to do this time? He's going to do a five damage melee attack. All right, we'll do biting parade right there to negate that. We'll get rid of the spreading infection. And then we'll just put, like, one little love tap on him right here. There we go. Perfect. Ooh, very nice. Like, they really made the parries and whatnot sound good. Like, they feel good. That, like, wha-clang when he's, like, blocking an attack. That's a that's, that's good. I'm a big fan of audio design, and so I like it. I think he's probably going to be alive on his next turn. Oh, unfortunately, he's going to hit us with a big nuke attack. And I don't think I can get away from him. Like, I don't have another enemy to ping-pong off of in order to get away from it. So we'll just block up real fast, and then we'll put Oath on him. Yeah, we're going to take one damage right there, which is unfortunate. Wish we had not taken the one damage, but it'll be fine. Uh, he's going to do a five damage melee attack, so we want to return an attack from our discard pile because we have Oath in there, and it's free, which means that we get a free smite on that side. Uh, we're going to open up on him with all the free attacks real quick, and then we're just going to finish him off. Perfect, and I love the way that they take the hit to the face and they kind of spin out in midair. That's very, very nice. Uh, so we get to learn a new technique. We can do Humble Request, gain energy equal to your hand size. That's pretty good. We've got Renewed Vigor, gain one energy, and if your Retribution is 20, you gain two instead. That's also really, really, really good. Postponed Sentence, you gain 12 armor. If you have an odd amount of smite or whatever choose a card from your discard pile and shuffle it into your hand Ooh, these two are like really really good i like both of these both of these are spicy i'll probably take renewed vigor i guess no nah, we'll take the big block let's take the big block i like big blocks All right, so we can scavenge, remove a card from our deck and get an antiquorum relic of tier one, or we can heal 15% of our HP and gain a random relic. Uh, let's go ahead and take the random relic and the HP, I guess. So we've got a defective proviator. These modest generators of energy date from such a remote era that the very name of their guardian deity has been forgotten in the meanders of time. Either on the first or second round, you will gain an energy and gain a card. That's pretty cool, and as you can see, it's been added to the top. And so antiquorums are basically pieces of technology that we're scavenging from down here underneath the soil from, like, ancient times. 
Uh, we can upgrade one card. We can lose 15 HP and upgrade two cards. Or we can increase our, 50, our HP by 15, but our teamwork level will go down with our, with our friend over here by one. I'll probably lose the 15 HP and upgrade two cards. I'm fine with that. That actually sounds like a pretty good trade. Uh, I'd like to upgrade Oath. The 12 damage that's free? Yes, absolutely. And then, let's see here. Returning a card. If it costs zero, gain two smite. Return an attack from your discard pile. Reduce its cost by two until played. If it already costs zero. Oh, okay. All right, all right, all right. Let's see here. Gain 16 if you have an odd amount. Choose a card from your discard and return it. If you have an odd amount of smite, choose a card from your discard pile. Shuffle it into your deck and reduce its cost by two. Okay. I think I kind of want to upgrade one of my blocks just to make sure we can get the energy out. Like, I feel like that's what I'm kind of like meandering towards is I like to build very very defensive sort of turtley decks that always have enough to do something uh, we've got a fight here we can attack or we can prepare uh, we lose a card on our first round but we get a better reward let's do that one I'm not I'm not feeling terrified right now mutants don't scare me they're doing 15 damage on the opening turn fair enough uh, there's 12 armor right there there's 19 armor right there a little bit of a visual bug right there where you saw the card cycling and being like fluff it a fluff it a fluff it like you don't want that to happen uh, we can kill this guy right now and so i i suspect that that's a really good idea we'll try to get him on the next turn big block big block you love to see it okay so we've got 10 damage coming out on this turn fair enough uh, let's go ahead and take an oath against this guy right here so there's 12 damage out. A little bit of that. A little bit of that. And then we've got a stun on this side. I don't know what those mean because I don't think that they have the pop-up tooltips in. It's apparent from the coloration of the cards that they're planning on putting in pop-in tooltips. Or pop-up tooltips that will tell you what zeal and what fleeting do. But I think it's not quite implemented yet. Oh, it must have been a penetrating attack. We still took damage, even though we had enough armor to get rid of it. And we've got a bleed on us now. On draw, draw a card. If this card is discarded at the end of your turn, you lose 4 HP. Weak. Okay. I think... We'll just kind of... I don't really feel like we have that much left to do. Like, I think we're kind of like... That was pretty much all we could do. Do we have any, like, cheap cards in there? No. Okay. I thought I ran Oath for some reason, but it looks like it recycled my deck back on in. Ooh. Ow. Okay. All right. So, like, increases damage from attacks per this value hit. Oh, that's why she's hitting so harder. Every time you attack this foe, it gains 10 damage. Aw, oh, dude, that's what's going on. Okay. Fair enough. So, you got to kind of, like, burst this guy down. I think I would like to shuffle in Postpone Sentence. It's just a really good block card. So it's three damage going out. And so we got to be kind of like careful about this. Let's tabulate. So 18 damage now. So we got to kind of fight this guy slow. Okay, now it makes sense. I was wondering why we took such a massive hit on that last turn. Why did we still take three right there? I thought I had enough block. Weird. Very, very strange. I mean, she's running a buff on this turn, so, like, whatever. We're going to throw that in there, and then I just want to keep bringing back Postponed Sentence so that I keep having it on every single turn. It's just so good. Yeah, sure. Blah, 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 blah. You too. Fair enough. I don't know what you just said, but I'm going to assume it was offensive. I'm going to assume that it was hurtful to my feelings. All right, so we can get Beast Slayer. If the target has 100 HP max, gain one smite and 15 damage. Anticipate felony knockback on counterattack. This card gains five damage. And then Mise en Place. We've got next round gain two energy and two cards. Mise en Place is really good. Beast Slayer is a lot of damage, though, for one energy. Let's maybe go... Oof, I'm going to go Beast Slayer. I'm going to play a little bit more aggressively, and hopefully we get an opportunity here to heal because we took a lot of scuffing on that last attack. Uh, so we are at a rest spot. We can upgrade a card. We can increase our teamwork. 
or we can heal 30% of our HP. That's that, I feel like 30% is what we need right now. Let's go ahead and take that and make sure that we're all nice and taken care of. We've got all the boo-boos buffed away. And so anyways, we can observe and gain a card among two, or we can get a free injector among three. Let's go for the injector. So we get that at the front end of the combat, which I think is actually really, really nice. So we've got a nectar, which gives us energy. It gives us damage. Three cards, four HP, and five armor. Wow, that's really good. Draw your next attack. Its cost is reduced by two, and its damage goes up by ten. Or we've got choose a card in the discard. Return it reduces. I'm going to take the third nectar. That's a, that's, a, that's a really nice oh shit button for if things go especially oh shitty. All right, so we've got a lot of damage coming on out. Yeah, that's going to be a hardcore opening turn. That's a little terrifying. But this guy, I think, misses because he doesn't close. Oh, he does move into your zone before he attacks. Okay. I guess I'll maybe go after you then. And I got, like, virtually no armor. So I think we're going to take a, a nasty little bit of... Actually, I can get like a, a nice, that's actually a pretty ugly little combo right there. All right, so we'll go Biting Parade just to make sure we've got a little bit of armor. And then we'll wipe that guy out. And then I guess we'll just kind of soak this turn. Big stab right there. Ow. I thought it said he was doing five times two. Why did he do like 30 damage? Oh, he's got that Fury ability. They've all got that Fury ability. Okay, so, like, we can't really trust what's on the card here, then. So I've actually got to do math. It should honestly automatically add this to this card right here. So you shouldn't have to tabulate this yourself. It should basically say on the activity 6 plus 5, or it should just say 11 up there. Like, it should effectively summarize for you so that you can make better educated decisions. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll Biting Parade up. And that gives us, I think, enough to make this happen. We're going to go Beast Slayer on you, because that's really all we've got for right now. And we should be able to finish this guy off on this turn. I am going to use my third Nectar, because I want the HP back. And I would love to have just an absolute blitz of a turn here. Let's go ahead and run Oath on him. We'll do Against Adversity to bring that back into our hand. Ooh, very nice. And I love the way the abilities actually seamlessly combo into one another. There's no break in the animation right there. If you're playing cards quickly, it just cues them up so that he does like a combo. And honestly, if they could get that combo to vary strikes like stabs and, you know, like, uh, you know, Ricasso grabs and things like that, like on in between just to vary up those combos right there and make them look really, really fluid. Foof. You'd actually have quite a visual spectacle on your hand. All right, so Anticipate Felony. That gives us knockback. We've got Humble Sun. After the attack, you are alone in your zone. Draw one card. That's 15 damage, though, which is pretty good. I haven't got to run a counterattack yet, and so, like, I'm sort of feeling like maybe the counterattack is not the best idea. Uh, we can increase our teamwork by one and remove a card. We can increase our teamwork by one and upgrade a card. I'm going to do that. So we've leveled her up now. We've got a new card called the Wolf Within or something. I think I would like to upgrade. So those don't get those just give flat damage increases. Okay. Honestly, against adversity has been doing really well for us, but I feel like we're still having trouble getting the armor up that we need to survive. And so I think I'm gonna use this upgrade on further upgrading armor cards. Like I'd like to have a lot of cards that basically allow me to block damage effectively because that seems to be the weak place in our defense we've got another fight coming up uh, let's just take the normal fight I guess do these guys have that fury thing if this foe is destroyed a random enemy gains five damage okay fair enough so what does the wolf within do add temper unleash or feed the wolf to your hand I'll click it so we can gain two smite every round gain one smite 
Lose two HP, draw one card. Uh, I'll probably just take the two smite now. All right. He's down. We unfortunately did not draw a whole lot of attack. Oh, wow. That did a crazy knockback. I like it. I didn't expect it to actually, like, launch him across the screen like Dragon Ball Z style. I'm all about it. All right. Biting Parade and Duty of the Patriarch, I guess. Yeah, we're going to take a little bit of a scuffing right there just from all the buffs that are being thrown around as we finish these guys off. Uh, so he's doing 15 damage right here. Yeah, that... I need the knockback back. Where's the knockback at? There we go. Give me the knockback. Perfect. All right, so now we just kind of go get rid of the spreading infection. And let's just turtle up for a second. Because he's going to throw that bomb at his feet. And so with the knockback, we knocked him back and out of the way. And so now we're feeling pretty good. I actually really, really like the positional warfare aspect of this game. I think it's going pretty well. Uh, we'll get a little bit of armor right there. We'll draw this bad boy. He's going to close the gap and deal 10 damage. Okay. So I think we can go all in on him without being too risky. Oh, and there's our counterattack right there. Very nice. So anyways, you've finally seen what a counterattack looks like. Uh, we can learn a new technique. We can get another knockback. We can get a sanctified smite. Each time you play a smite, this card's damage increases by 3 until played. Okay, we can get a new trial, which means we draw three cards, but we lose one of our counterattack meter. Okay, all right, fair enough. I've been calling the counterattack meter smite this entire video, and I'm not unaware of that fact. You guys are unfortunately just going to have to deal with me using the wrong terminology here, because there's a lot of new words flying around in the context of this game, and they're all muddled up in my head at this point. Like, I know that in my brain I know how the game works, but I've just been interchangeably calling everything the wrong words, alright? You're just going to have to accept my apologies on that front. You know, I'm not like a massive fan of any of these. So we do play a lot of smites. But I'll probably go for another knockback, and then maybe we'll just delete it later on. Like, I, I don't really know. I haven't played the game enough to know exactly what the right choices are. I'm going to take the healing again, because unfortunately, I've been taking damage. I've been, I've been getting hurted. I've been getting hurted, and I've been getting dropped. Uh, so we can go up against an elite fight and heal 10 HP, or let's do the elite fight, dude. I want to see what the elite fight looks like. When this foe is killed, gain 15 armor. Okay. So we got 21 damage going out. We can mitigate like a little bit of that. I suggest we knock that guy back and get some damage off on him. And we'll just stay on him nice and tight, I guess. We're gonna take some damage right here, but it's okay. Big block big block and two damage off right there I'll take it that's fine uh, they're gonna do what looks like 23 damage on this turn give me the wolf within real fast we'll gain two smites for free looks good we're gonna focus fire this guy okay very good we're gonna take that back and we're gonna just double biting parade I guess we should be able to mitigate that whole turn, though, which is really, really nice considering the sheer volume of damage they're putting out on a given turn. Uh, we just got a smite back, which is great. It's not enough to kill this guy. What's in my discard pile right now? Okay. So I want against adversity, and I want to bring back oath so that I get the free smites. And we will kill this guy with one energy. That dude right there. We're going to Oath him. We're going to double smite him. We're going to Biting Parade. 
which I think gets our armor up to requisite levels to keep us from taking damage on this turn because these guys actually give us a buff whenever they die. And so, like, they're actually kind of being helpful right now by dying horribly. Uh, we've got Beast Slayer. That's not really going to help out too much right now. We have nothing in our discard pile, so that's something to keep in mind as well. We need 15 armor in order to mitigate on this turn. So we'll go postponed. We'll play postponed last. We've got 15 damage right there. Oh, he blocked me. Well, that's upsetty spaghetti. Okay. Yeah, I hated that. Uh, let's go postponed sentence then, and then we'll probably just turtle up on this turn. Oh, I do have a free smite though. So I guess I'll, I guess I'll throw out that little tiny bit of trickly damage. Okay. Go oath. Oh, he had the block again, man. I gotta start paying attention. We gotta block 18 damage. I can do that. Oh, nice. Well, I didn't even see that combo right there, but I'm glad that I ultimately did see that combo. He's got his shield up, so we kind of want to throw, like, feeder damage at this. Yeah, there we go. And yeah, we're just going to block up because he's doing a big attack anyways. And there's our counter. Boom. Down he goes. Uh, the game seems to be pretty well assembled, in all honesty. I haven't really seen anything that's jumped out of my eye. The sound design feels on point. The action is visceral and nice to watch. And I think it really freshes up. Like, the problem with card games is they tend to be really sterile on the action front. Like, you play a card. There's, like, a little slash thing that goes across the enemy. Like, the art is usually, like, not that good looking. Like, it's basically just kind of, like, placeholders to imply that something's happening. I like the fact that with this game, they went all in on the presentational side of the game to actually make it look good, feel good good and sound good to be involved in the fight like yes you are playing cards but at the end of the day the cards are actually choreographing a fight that you can watch take place and it all strings together which I think is really awesome they might want to consider the idea of having a replay at the end of the fight with all of the jarring turn things removed so it actually shows your character all in one smooth animation dispatching all the enemies and all the parries going off and everything uh, so that you can piece it all together and then maybe even like download that video you know what I mean to make it look like cool and like save it for sort of like montages and stuff I don't know like kind of kind of cool stuff to think about we've got an antiquorum so we've got a predictive assembling when the fight starts draw your next program reduce its cost by one each fight if you are bloody drain 10 HP from a foe each fight gain one divine intercession I don't know what divine intercession is but it sounds awesome and paladin like so I'm gonna go ahead and take it but yeah this game is called beneath Oresa. I'm really impressed by this demo. Uh, when I was doing my practice run prior, I did have a bug, though, and I did want to point it out. I played a card that required me to discard a card, but it was the last card in my hand, and doing so, like playing that card without the discard available, basically froze the game up for me, and so I did run across a bug, but given the fact that the game is a demo and it's not actively being sold at the moment, like, that's kind of the feedback that they're looking for anyways, and so, like, I'm not going to take it that seriously. Uh, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we had Beneath Oresa, which is pretty cool, and I'm actually kind of excited for it. I'm not a big card game guy, but I think if you can wrap a card game up inside the sort of anime or action movie inspired choreographed fighting that this game has right here I can feel my interest in the game actually like upswelling because I tend to sort of I tend to a sort of think of card games as being sort of like visually boring basically and I like the fact that someone else has noticed that as well that card games tend to be very visually boring and they've decided to do something about it like I like that so well done developers I'll see y'all later thank you for stopping on in my name is Splattercat I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to today up on the chopping block we had beneath Oresa tomorrow we will have something else I appreciate you stopping on in but that's all I got bye bye everybody I'll see you next time.